Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrick. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa met with the Minister of Housing Basim Al Hamara at Ghibiya Palace to mark the completion of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's Royal Directive to provide new 40,000 housing units to citizens. His Royal Highness noted that His Majesty's directives are the basis of development initiatives to benefit citizens. He emphasized that His Majesty's Royal Directive announced in December of 2013 to provide 40,000 new housing units across the kingdom has been a government priority. His Royal Highness recognized the efforts of the Ministry of Housing to achieve His Majesty's Royal Directive. He added that collaborative efforts and public-private partnerships have resulted in innovative plans and financial solutions for housing projects which have enhanced the kingdom's long-term sustainable development. His Royal Highness expressed appreciation to the employees of the Ministry of Housing and supporting agencies for their hard work and commitment commitment to achieving His Majesty's Directive to Advance Housing and Urban Development Projects. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, attended the meeting. The National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa met with the Pakistani Chief of Army Staff General Qamar Javid Bajwa on his official visit to attend Pakistan Day celebrations. The National Guard Commander praised the advanced Bahraini-Pakistani relations. The meeting discussed regional and international issues of common interest and means to develop military cooperation. The National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa met the Director General of the Pakistani Military Inter Services Intelligence, Lieutenant General Nadim Anjam. The meeting reviewed cooperation in the military field. The Pakistani Director General hailed the development of Bahraini Pakistani relations under the leadership of the two countries. The National Guard Commander praised the progress of the Pakistani armed forces and agencies in combating terrorism and ensuring security and stability of the region. His Highness wished Pakistan further progress and prosperity. The National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa had earlier arrived in Islamabad for an official visit. Upon the invitation of the Pakistani Chief of Army Staff General Qamar Javid Bajwa to participate as a guest of honor in the Pakistan Day celebrations, a number of senior Pakistani Army commanders, the Ambassador of Bahrain to Pakistan Mohammed Ibrahim Mohammed, and members of the embassy were at the forefront to receive His Highness upon his arrival at the Noor Khan military base in. Rawalpindi. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the General Sports Authority, the GSA, and President of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the GSA Board of Directors meeting held at his office in Al Wadi Palace. At the beginning of the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Khalid welcomed the members hailing their efforts during the past period and affirming that the next stage requires double the efforts to continue making achievements that contribute to the development of the sports system in the kingdom. His Highness discussed with the members the topics on the meeting's agenda, which are based on continuing the implementation of developmental plans and programs, as well as organizational projects that contribute to improving the quality of performance and developing sports authorities. The meeting produced the following outcomes. Accepting club requests to transform into companies. Determining a classification for coaches, academies and gyms. Establishing a medical system and the adoption of the national program to examine all athletes. Adopting a set of regulations to ensure the non-recurrence of debts and financial obligations for sports field affiliates. Defining a comprehensive control panel to follow up on the work and achievements of the authority. Developing executive programs for the solar energy project and the national clubs. The council has set next October as a proposed date for holding the Sports Investment Summit. At the end of the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Khalid directed the Minister of Youth and Sports Affairs and the CEO of GSA to hold a meeting with the Ministry of Education to benefit from school sports facilities after school hours to achieve integration of facilities to serve the development of Bahraini sports. 
On behalf of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, a ceremony marking or attended a ceremony marking Bahrain Society of Engineers, the BSE Golden Jubilee, held under the theme 50 Years of Excellence and Dedication at the Bahrain International Exhibition and Convention Center. The Deputy Premier extended his deepest thanks and gratitude to His Majesty the King for prior pat patronizing uh, the ceremony and conveying His Majesty's greetings to the BSE Chairman, members, and all engineers on this occasion. He praised the support of the government shared by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister for voluntary work and non-governmental organizations including Bahrain Society of Engineers. He congratulated the BSE chairman and members paying homage to its founders and successive chiefs since its establishment in 1972, hailing their contributions to the engineering profession. Sheikh Khalid honored the winners of the BSC Award as well as the winners of the Best Monument Design Prize. BSC founders, former chairmen, prominent personalities, ministers, government entities, board members and affiliates were also honored. The Deputy Premier also opened an exhibition themed Bright Decades, showcasing rare photos and publications that document the history of engineers in Bahrain. The Minister of Housing Engineer Basim Al Hamar has affirmed that the Royal Directive to provide 40,000 housing units constituted a major turning point in the housing march, especially since the executive plan of His Majesty's directives included the construction of five housing cities simultaneously as well as the implementation of approximately 40 projects of residential complexes, which included all uh, governance of the kingdom. The Minister said that the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and the Prime Minister to the social housing sector had a large impact on achieving the directives. Al Hamar has expressed appreciation for the government's interest in activating partnerships with the private sector and providing social housing projects for citizens, noting that it has resulted in many innovative initiatives, including the Mazaya program, which has provided affordable financing solutions to about 10,000 citizens so far. Under the patronage of Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bouainin, a panel discussion was held remotely between the public prosecution represented by the Family and Child Prosecution and some civil society institutions in partnership with the Supreme Council for Women in order to enhance the cooperation between or with the strategic partners in the public prosecution initiative for general social welfare care and to speak more about uh, the care initiative we are joined over the phone by the public prosecutor ahmed uh, hamad al fadl hello mr ahmed can you tell us a little bit about uh, the initiative and what it aims to achieve hello and good evening um the public prosecution's initiative care comes after conducting a thorough study on several cases to analyze causes of crimes and providing appropriate remedies to them specifically those committed by children, women, or those that fall within the scope of the family. This initiative, started by the public prosecution, with the help of different government bodies and various international organizations, aims to overcome the traditional role of the public prosecution in investigating crimes and referring any wrongdoers to the appropriate courts, into finding the causes of the crimes, whether they be psychological, economic, or social causes. With the help of social and psychological experts, to providing available ways to remedy those causes and offer the appropriate services and care to ensure that anyone who commits a crime does not go back to it. Amazing. That was Public Prosecutor Ahmed Hamad Al Fadl. Again, thank you for joining us. Under the patronage of Attorney General Dr. Ali bin Fadl Bouainin, a discussion panel was held remotely between the public prosecution represented by the Family and Child Prosecution and authorities concerned with implementing the provisions of the Children's Restorative Justice and Protection from Abuse Law regarding alternative penalties and measures for children with the aim of establishing an integrated work system that achieves the legal and rehabilitation goals. The Attorney General stressed that the discussion panel demonstrates the solidarity of judicial and executive authorities to continue making achievements in the field of protecting the rights of children in light of the implementation of the Law of Restorative Justice for Children, which represents a pioneering step in the justice system and the protection of children's rights in Bahrain in light of the humanitarian approach of His Majesty the King. The discussion panel addressed several main aspects, including the effective 
communication mechanisms between judicial authorities, ministries and public bodies concerned with implementing the provisions of the law to create an integrated system to guarantee the rights of children and protect them from abuse in addition to awareness, counseling and rehabilitation programs. The workshop aims to contribute to those authorities and providing the necessary support for the implementation of the restorative justice law for children and protecting them from abuse by providing voluntary work and rehabilitation programs as alternative penalties and measures that are appropriate for the child. Also, it will help to raise them in a proper manner in accordance with the law and the international instruments, especially the Convention on the Rights of the Child for the reintegration of the child into society. Among the targeted programs are leadership programs and the use of technology in order to develop the child's skills in the line with the requirements of the generation. With the aim of coordinating national efforts to provide volunteer work and training programs as alternative penalties for children in accordance with the provisions of the restorative justice law for children and the protection from maltreatment, whereas the law gives the child several guarantees during the investigation and the trial stage, for example, the right to have a lawyer and the right to remain silent and the right to inform their guardians before integrating them. And to speak more about that, we have with us Public Prosecutor Mohamed Bouhidji. Hello, Mr. Mohamed. What is the goal of this seminar, especially with the participation of so many public institutions and entities? Uh, hello, good evening. Uh, first of all, this seminar was uh, entitled uh, by Sentences and Alternative Measures for Children. It was organized under His uh, Ex uh, Excellency, the Attorney General, Dr. Ali Bou Fabul Bouhineen. And it is a part of seminars with various civil society institutions and authorities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Um, today's seminar was attended by several ministries and official institutions with the aim of coordinating efforts and deploying available capabilities and setting plans that contribute to the development and building community members, um, as well as inviting ministries and government agencies to provide voluntary work and training programs that are appropriate for the child in various aspects to implement the restorative justice law for children, where we can build an individual who has sufficient knowledge to avoid deviant behavior in the future. Um, Soothing on what the adult sanctions and alternative measures project has achieved in the past, and the support it has gained officially and on international level, um, therefore we reiterate our invitation to all ministries and official agencies to participate in achieving the purpose of the restorative justice law and uh, by contributing and providing voluntary work and rehabilitation programs for children in a manner that compensates with their health and psychological well-being. Thank you for elaborating on that. That was Public Prosecutor Mohamed Bouhidji. Thank you for joining us. The Bahrain Chamber for Dispute Resolutions, BCDR, co-hosted the 12th annual Middle East V Premute uh, with its partners at the Commercial Law Development Program of the U.S. Department of Commerce and the Center for International Legal Education of the University of Pittsburgh. The, the Middle East uh, Premood is a preparatory competition for the uh, William C. V. International Commercial Art Arbitration Moot held annually in Vienna and Hong Kong, and attracting more than 400 uh, law schools from around the world. The week-long program included a three-day preparatory workshop where 35 teams from 24 countries and more than 75 arbitrators participated in uh, the competition. BCDR aims to increase awareness of international commercial arbitration to raise standards of advocacy and more widely to consolidate the study and practice of international commercial law and arbitration in the Middle East. International commercial arbitration is a key pillar for trade and investment and the William C. Vismut is an international competition that brings over 300 law schools from all over the world to compete by learning about international commercial arbitration. We saw the United States government that very few countries from the Middle East actually have the opportunity to compete, moreover, to help institutionalize ADR practices in their respective countries. So with BCDR, we've been their partner ever since 2006 in instilling a regional moot that brings together the Middle East, North Africa, and other teams to learn and foster international commercial arbitration. 
we really enjoyed the program and um, it has been a busy sh schedule in a, a very good way. Yeah. Uh, the team learned a lot and we have been able to improve our arguments throughout the week, which at least made us reach the final of the preview. We've been honored to participate in the 12th MENA PRIMU. Uh, we worked extensively for five days, three days in the BCDR, whereby we anal analyzed the problem. We worked with the multiple advisors and heard their recommendations. And with those the recommendations, our team has reached the final in the 12th MENA PRIMU. And it's been an honor that we're here now in Bahrain. So we really enjoyed the program. The Arab League organized a symposium on the occasion of Arab Human Rights Day at Expo 2020 in Dubai, where Arab Parliament Speaker Adil bin Abdurrahman al Sumi said that the issuance of a resolution by the UN Human Rights Council last October affirms that living in a clean, healthy and sustainable environment is a human right and is an advanced step towards or protecting this right. He called for building on this important UN resolution and including the right in international human rights conventions. He also noted that climate change is a global issue that no single country or group of countries is able to deal with this issue. Without collective action, which is the only way to protect humanity from any catastrophic threat. The chairman of the Transitional Sovereignty Council of Sudan, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah al Burhan, has received the Ambassador of Bahrain in Khartoum, Abdullah Rabia Saeed Rabia. The Ambassador conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad al Khalifa, extending their well wishes of continued progress and prosperity to the government and people of Sudan. He also affirmed his uh, constant endeavors to work to strengthen and consolidate the close brotherly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Sudan for the benefit of the two countries and their people. For his part, the TSC chairman expressed his utmost greetings to His Majesty the King and to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, wishing the Kingdom of Bahrain further development and progress and prosperity. He also wished the Ambassador success in his diplomatic duties.